thieves. So Jesus knew that he would be a king that would die like no other king. King of kings and lord of lords. Standing between two people who deserve to die, perhaps. But at this moment, Jesus left us with a decision. At this moment, he left us with a decision like no other decision. Do we accept this king on the cross? Yes, we do. His actions present us with a decision that matters to us because I preached a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was. When you talk about the cross, if you believe Jesus died on the cross and you repented of your sins, you've accepted Him as Lord and Savior, and because of the cross, you're going to heaven. But if you reject that, you're going to hell. Simply put. That's the decision we make because of that. At this moment, His actions... Present us with a decision that matters. You see, Jesus knew he was not just coming to be a reigning king, but he was going to be a, a, a he was going to be a suffering servant for you and I. Not just a reigning king. He knew as he looked over Jerusalem. And see, here's the thing. At this moment, as he looked over Jerusalem, that he wept over Jerusalem. Because of their rejection. But you know what really broke his heart? At this moment, he not only saw the rejection, but he saw the heartbreaking consequences that they would go through because of that rejection. He told them. He told me. He said, "Look." He said, "You know, the, the thing about it is," he said. You know, you're going to be surrounded. You're going to be, enemies will be up on you and close to you, in on every side, and they're going to level you and your children within you to the ground. They will not leave you in one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. What he's saying here is this. He said, it breaks my heart to know that because of your rejection, you'll be killed. You'll be destroyed. And I look at you and I today because of rejection of Jesus Christ today. His heart is still broken because he knows those will who will reject him. And he knows the consequences of rejecting him, him is eternity in hell. Eternity in hell. Forever. And I realize so many times people think, well, hell's not going to be such a bad place. There'll be a lot of folks there that I know. No, we don't know anyone in that sense. But you will know where you are. You will feel the pain. You will you won't be able to see because it's outer darkness and the fire is going to be there forever. You'll have that sense of feeling. The pain will be so terrible. I was thinking, yes, at the, at the funeral home, a friend of mine and I were talking and, and his brother-in-law was with him and this friend of mine's brother just passed away a couple weeks ago. And he said, Tom, he said, my brother's pain got so bad. It got so bad. He said, looked at us and said, just go ahead and take me, let me go on home. He said, the pain is so bad, I can't stand it. Let me go on home. Well, he did that day, that evening. But let me go home, I can't stand the pain. You see, the thing about it is that because of the cross and the decision he made, he knew that home was where the Lord Jesus Christ was. He knew where he would be. But Jesus wept because he knew what the consequences were of those who rejected him. Hell. This moment, we've talked about Jesus. But this moment, how about you and I? This moment, we need to remember what Jesus has done for us. He has suffered. He has bled. And he has died so that we can be delivered from the bitterness of the bondage of sin. Delivered from that. That bondage. So when you think about bondage, that means it's, that either you're in chains or, or you're ropes or you're in prison and you can't do anything but be there. That's all you can do. And it seems there's no release and no relief inside. But Jesus on that cross, this moment... This moment, was able to make it so that you and I can be free from the bitterness of the bondage of sin. <laughs> he bled, he died, he suffered so that we could be sanctified by the blood of the Lamb. That we could be set apart. I think when we look at a sacrifice and all through the Old Testament, we find a blood sacrifice because that's what was needed. 
And let me tell you what, it was still needed for you and I. Even after the Old Testament days, the blood was still needed. But it would not be the blood of bulls or of goats or of heifers or anything else. But it had to be the blood of a lamb without spot, a lamb without blemish. And that can only be Jesus at this very moment. That's right. At this moment. At this moment, we need to remember that because he suffered and he bled and he died, that we could be sanctified by the blood of the Lamb. We need to remember that because He suffered and He bled and died, that we can be redeemed by the soundness and the, and the suddenness and the sweetness of salvation. Redeemed, brought back to God by Jesus Christ. Somebody paid the price for you this moment. This moment. They paid the price for you. Jesus suffered and bled and died. So that we could experience the fullness of forgiveness that can fill our hearts with praise. Man, I'm glad he's a forgiving Lord. I'm glad that when we come to him, it says I forgive. I used to sing a song years ago that said the sweetest words I ever heard was I forgive. I forgive. The words that came from the lips of our Savior. Father, forgive them. I don't know what we do. This moment. This moment. This very moment. <coughs> how about you? This very moment. How is it with your soul today? This very moment. There may not be a moment tomorrow. There may not be a tomorrow. But this very moment. What are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with him? Today. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. This moment. This time. And while every head is bowed this morning, let me ask you this again this moment. This is your moment with him. Right? And he's saying to you to come. He's saying to you this moment. He said, I, I determined my direction. I, I went to Calvary. I know it's going to be hard. I know it's going to be difficult. But I went there for you. He said, I, I died there for you because of the fact you need to be redeemed. You need to be forgiven of your sins. You needed to have a home that's eternal in heaven. This moment, what will you do with him? Why don't you come? Why don't you step out of your seat this morning and come? I'll be here to greet you. One of our deacons will come and help me. And they'll greet you. But most of all, Jesus will have his arms open wide for you. And say, Come to me, all you that labor to heavy laden, I'll give you rest. This moment, right now. Jesus knew that he had a week, basically. He knew that as he came into Jerusalem, that by the end of the week, he would be on the cross, he'd be in the grave, he'd be out of the grave. But you know what? This very moment, we have no idea about our life, what it's going to be tomorrow, if there is a life for us tomorrow. This very moment, do you know Jesus? Or do you know him? Has the blood been applied to your life? You know it. Why don't you come? Why don't you come this morning? If you can't come tomorrow, you just take of someone next to you and say, this is my moment. This is my moment with Jesus. I'm going.